Let's start lesson 6.4. It's about trigonometric functions and, and how do we graph it. First, we're going to see how we're going to graph cosine of x. Before I start graphing cosine x, let's just uh, say about uh, cosine that, let's see this part, that cosine is an even function first. How do we know that cosine is even? To know if a function is even or odd, we know that we need to just replace x by minus x. If it, gives, if it gives me the same answer, what does it mean? It means it's an even function. And we know that an even function is symmetric with respect to y prime or y. So now we're going to see graphically how it's symmetric with respect to y prime or y. Now to be able to draw any function, we need to have some particular points. So we will take all the points on the unit circle that define a full period. And we know that when I'm just working with cosine x, the period is 2 pi. Because when, I, when I'm, I'm, I'm standing at 0 and I do all the full circle, so I'm doing one period, it's 2 pi. So those are the particular points for cosine note from the preceding chapter. For x is equal to 0, cosine 0 is 1. Cosine pi over 2 is 0, cosine pi of minus 1, cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0, and cosine 2 pi is 1. And sure, it will go more and more and more, but I will just stop on one period. And after that, I can continue the graph, the same thing or symmetry. You will see it now on the second page. Now, to be able to draw cosine x, first of all, I need to put the period, the period I have from 0 till 2 pi. And I can see here the other particular points. Now, if I want guys to know what are the, the other values, first the period I need to divide by 4. So if you do 2 pi over 4, it gives you, it gives you pi over 2. It means each, each interval here is pi over 2. So I have here, from here, here I have pi over 2. 2 pi over 2, it means this is pi. 3 pi over 2. And 4 pi over 2, it means it's 2 pi. So if you want to see the particular points. And now, if you look here, guys, at cosine, and you see that the maximum value is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1. So this we call it the amplitude. So the distance between the midline and the maximum point is called the amplitude. So the amplitude is what this is, this is the distance. The range, it means y is between what and what, minus 1 and 1. And now I will just draw, draw the join the points. So those are the points I will join the points. So if I join the particular point that I got, so this function represent the cosine function. Now, if I want to complete the graph, you can do the symmetry with respect to y prime or y, and then you can continue also here, and you will have a function that it's sinusoidal. So this is the cosine function. Now. If I want to graph cosine minus x using cosine x, we know that, uh, sorry, minus cosine x, the graph of cosine minus x is symmetric, it's the symmetry of cosine x with respect to what? Symmetry with respect to x prime or x. So all what we need to do is to do the symmetry with respect to x prime or x. But this, it means that this point becomes here. The point here, since it's on x prime x, it will stay in its place. This point will be here. So the maximum is going to become a minimum, the minimum becomes the maximum. And the point on the x of symmetry will stay the, the, in the same place. This one is going to be here. And now, guys, I will join the points, and the green function represents minus cosine x. So every time you need to do minus of a function, it's the symmetry of the function itself with respect to x prime x. So this is minus cosine x. The domain is between, it's minus infinity plus infinity, so I can take any value of x. The range, as, as we saw, is between minus 1 and 1. The amplitude, this, this, this is the distance between, from the maximum to the midline, we call it the amplitude, and the period is 2 pi. So each 2 pi is going to have the same thing. So if I want to continue and to complete it, it's going to be like this, guys. I don't want to mess my figure. And from the other side, also, we need to do it exactly the same. And then you will have the cosine function. Now let's move to the sine function. Again, sine is a not function. Why? Because sine minus x is equal to minus sine x. 
So it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Now we will take the particular point exactly the same, 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And this is a full period. And now if I will plot the points on the graph, you will see that the cosine starts from 0, 0, the sine, sorry. And then it goes up, down, up. So this is sine x. If I look at the amplitude, it's also 1. The period is 2 pi. Domain, it uh, belongs to r. The range between minus 1 and 1. Now, if I want to graph minus sine x using the graph of sine x, it's exactly the same. It's I do the symmetry with respect to x prime or x. So the point on x prime or x is still the same. This one is going to be here. This one is still here. This one going to be up here. And this one will be here. Now you will see later on why I'm doing that. Because later on you have the transformations. And you need to know how to do the symmetry. The reflection we say also with respect to x from x. So now the green one is sine x. So sine starts from the origin. If you see cosine starts from the amplitude here. And also I can complete the graph if I want by doing the symmetry and I will have also a sinusoidal function for sine x. Let's remove that. No, I, I need this part. That's it. Now let's move to tangent x. Tangent is sine over cosine. It's a fraction. And you know that when I have a fraction, a fraction is defined when the denominator is not equal to zero. So it means when cosine is not equal to zero. And you know that cosine x equals zero for pi over two and for minus pi over two and for all the uh, sisters of pi over two. So x should be not equal to two and plus one pi over two. Also from where this one comes, because when I'm talking about tangent, it means x cannot be equal to pi over two plus n pi because the period of tangent is pi. And if I do here the same denominator, I will have it like this. You factorize by pi over 2. And then I will have here 1 plus 2n. And that's it. It comes from, from here. So that's why x not equal to n plus 1 pi over 2. Now let's continue. If I want to take the particular points for tangent to be able to draw it, you will see that I have for minus pi over 2 and for pi over 2, it's undefined because number over 0 undefined. So those going to be the vertical asymptotes. And I will continue the other uh, values that are particular points. I will explain why the period of tangent is pi, guys. Because if I am uh, un working on the unit circle, when I'm in quadrant 1, sine over cosine, is exactly the same when I'm in quadrant 3, so the period is pi. And when I'm in quadrant, here plus over plus gives me plus, here minus over minus gives me plus. And I'm in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3, both tangent are negative, so also the relation is pi. That's why the period of tangent is pi. The range is as we have also the same, it's r. The domain, it's x belongs to r with x not equal to n plus 1 pi over 2. Now, I want when I want to draw tangent x, First, I will draw the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And I have the three particular points, minus pi over 4, 1. I have a minus 1, sorry, here. Now 1 uh, pi over 4, uh, 1. Here it's minus 1. And then I can now, those are the vertical asymptotes. Now, the function, it's... It comes from the vertical asymptote, passing to the particular point, the origin, and then it's going again to the other vertical asymptote. I can continue exactly the same. I'm going to have more vertical asymptotes, and we continue the graph. It's going to be the same here. Also, vertical asymptote, the same here, and then this is the tangent x. Now, let's move to the last. I want to delete all this to keep the graph clean. So, now let's uh, move to two example I have. First, I want to graph uh, 3 sine for x using sine x. You know from the preceding chapter, the transformation, if I look here, the 3 represents here a vertical shift because I'm multiplying 3 by y, so I'm going up. It's a uh, up or down. It's a vertical shift of scale, uh, of scale factor 3. I'm not moving up, guys. I mean, I'm stretching up vertically. So, 
in this case, what does it mean when I have vertical shift? Me, the amplitude will change. I have a horizontal shift, this four of scale factor on over four. It means this one, I will stretch it horizontally. It means the period will change. Now, if I want to, so what is the new period? Now we're going to discuss what is the new period here for this function. So now, I, I, I already did sign, uh, sign x. That's it. This purple is sign x, you know, the period between 0 and, and 2 pi. Now, I have first a vertical shift of 3, uh, factor 3. It means the function we're going to have a shift vertically of um, 3, and it means the amplitude is going to be here at 3. So gonna be this is my maximum and this is I have a minimum here the amplitude, and now the horizontal shift is factor scale of one over four. It means the two pi gonna be now pi over two the period. So the period gonna be two pi over four. It means gonna be pi over two, and you're gonna divide pi over two in four parts. Pi over two over four gives me pi over eight. So I have here pi over eight, two pi over eight, three pi over eight, and here gonna be four pi over eight. And now it means that this point here is going to be here. Now, how are we going to graph it? I have this point going to be here. I have here a point. I have here a point. So now my function is going to be like this. It's going to go up, down, till the minimum here. So like this, one, two, and then... One, two, three, four. And then it's going to be here. I think that I did something. That's it. And then now my function <clears throat> will be like that. So it's going to be here. Let me just fix it again. Properly. One minute. Because it's a small little bit. So I. Okay. Now like this. So this one is here. And then I'm going to pass through this point here. This one is here. And that's it. This point is here. So now this one represents 3 sine 4x. And you see how it's I have a vertical stretch and I have a horizontal uh, shift. You can see it. Horizontal uh, shift. And this is a vertical shift or a uh, stretch. Now let's move to the last example. How are we going to graph secant theta from cosine theta. We know that secant is 1 over cosine. It means the values that make cosine theta 0 are the vertical asymptote. What are those values? Those values are pi over 2 plus 2 and pi and minus pi over 2 plus 1 or 3 pi over 2. So this is my cosine. How are we going to draw the secant? First, we're going to draw the vertical asymptote. So I have the vertical asymptote for minus pi over 2. And I have another vertical asymptote for pi over 2. I can see it here. Let me see if I did it here. Yeah, I did it here. And now, we know that when I'm doing the inverse function, this maximum is going to be now a minimum. So the function is going to be here on this part like this. I have another vertical asymptote here. And the minimum is going to be a maximum is going to be like this. So I can see here. You can, you'll be able to see here, guys, how it, it comes becomes like this so this maximum this minimum gonna be this maximum gonna be a minimum so i have this is the first part and here this is the minimum become a, a maximum this is the second part and the green part and it present the secant that's it for this video in the next video we will do how we're gonna do all the transformations for the trigonometric